Hey, good morning everyone. Welcome back to our vlog. We're still here in Lapu-Lapu City. It's day two since uh, Kenken's sister arrived and things are already buzzing with excitement. And speaking of mornings, Kenken was up early and looks like he's already deep into his morning routine. <laughs> Gotta make sure we're looking fresh and ready for the day, right? But before we dive into the day, let's address the elephant in the room. Or should I say, the mess in our room. Yeah, we haven't had the chance to tidy up yet. After a long day of travel and excitement, all we could think about was crashing into bed for some much needed rest. Now, let's take a peek outside our window and see how Lapu Lapu City greets us in the morning. The streets are starting to come alive and you can feel the energy building up. I'm just going to hop back into bed and catch a bit more sleep while waiting for Kenken to finish up his morning routine. Once he's ready, we'll grab some breakfast later. Hey mga guys! Hi mga guys! Hi mga guys! Hi mga guys! Og mga guys! <laughs> Let's get some breakfast! Room 605. <laughs> Off to the hotel's cafeteria on the second floor. Time to see what they've whipped up for our breakfast. Fingers crossed for some delicious treats. While we were waiting for our food and Kenken was lost in thought, I headed to the beverage station to grab my go-to morning drink, which is coffee. Spanish style na one mangus niya na koi eggs na yahagis kay bacon and egg latte mga torta guys thank you oh. and then the eggs the grub is on the table guys so what are we waiting for let's chow down Just as we were wrapping up our meal, the rest of the squad showed up to join us for breakfast. After indulging in a hearty breakfast, we swiftly exited the hotel and hailed a taxi. Today held a handful of activities for us, and since it was the gang's inaugural visit to Cebu, we meticulously crafted our itinerary to make the most of our three-day stint in this vibrant city. Despite the packed schedule, we were determined to bring our plans to fruition. Our current destination is Cebu City, and we're cruising through the Cebu Cordova Expressway to ensure a swift arrival. First on our checklist is the renowned Magellan's Cross in Cebu City, followed by a visit to the Santo Nino Church, and thirdly, the historic Fort San Pedro. We'll also see what other hidden gems we can squeeze into our brief exploration of downtown Cebu City. We've just touched down in the heart of downtown Cebu, where you'll discover the iconic Magellan's Cross and Santo Nino Church. Cebu City is brimming with historical landmarks, and naturally, you wouldn't want to let any of them slip by without capturing the moment with a selfie. <laughs> The planting of Magellan's Cross dates back to the Spanish explorer's first circumnavigation of the globe, led by Ferdinand Magellan. This historic event unfolded upon their arrival in Cebu, Philippines on April 21, 1521. Even though I spent my growing up years in this province, every visit to this place makes me feel like a tourist, captivated by the timeless allure of Magellan's Cross. No trip to Magellan's Cross would be truly fulfilling without immersing yourself in the enchanting experience of Sinulo. This ritual prayer is a homage to the Señor Santo Niño, the Child Jesus, and it is the very essence that birthed the vibrant Sinulog festival. Don't miss the chance to witness the Sinulog ritual. 
and you can even approach some ladies to perform it for you in exchange for a donation of any amount. We've just arrived at the premises of the Santo Nino Cathedral, the revered residence of the famous Santo Nino de Cebu. We search for a spot within the vicinity to light candles for our offerings. However, we discovered that candles purchased from outside are no longer permitted here. Instead, there are designated candles available, crafted specifically for this area, catering to those who wish to pray and make candle offerings. I don't think it's original. No, it doesn't look like that. Well, it looks original, but I don't think it's possible to keep the remains like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the details. Any amount ragged. Wala sila mag specify yung amount. Oh, kung pagkatong earthquake dere, kanang bell free niya na tumpag na, kanang giri construct na siya. So ni hire sila from Europe. Oh, para restore ang bell free niya. Morning church. Oh, morning church. Original yapo niya church. Tung mga na tumpag dere, more yapo gamit sa pag restore niya. 2013. Earthquake, a very strong earthquake that struck Cebu last 2013 and it destroyed the belfry of this church. And it happened in 2013? Yes, 2013, a magnitude 7.2. In order to restore the belfry, they hired people from Europe to restore the belfry of the church. It took them almost two years to reconstruct the belfry. Mm. Many people from Europe. Yeah. There are a lot of no, no old one. churches in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, yes. true, true. Mm. And it's a bit uh, of a kind of a artificial way of mm -hmm. working. Maybe that's the reason. But nobody is specialized in this kind of yeah. mm. Yeah. Mm. Enough of my storytelling about the past earthquake's impact on Santo Nino Cathedral. We proceeded to explore the cathedral and uncover its hidden gems. As we stepped inside, the cathedral buzzed with activity. A mass was in progress. Photography and videography were prohibited, so we focused on immersing ourselves in the architectural marvels. The cathedral showcased a plethora of displays, providing an educational experience. Numerous old paintings adorned the walls, vividly depicting the history of Santo Niño, the church and the inception of Christianity in the Philippines. These paintings, crafted by talented Cebuano artists, were donated to narrate the rich history of Cebu. Through these artistic creations, we delved into the origins of everything, gaining a profound understanding of our roots and realizing what makes Cebu uniquely rich in history. Hey guys, I'm going to go to Santo Nino. I'm going to go to the Dalgas Street of Cebu, Colon Street. I'm going to go to Fort San Pedro, Plaza Independencia. Plaza Independencia is one of the most significant sites in the history of Cebu. It is a symbol of independence and freedom from all the conquerors that tried to take over the island of Cebu. Its century-old trees are witnesses to what the plaza had been through during the colonial days. It is conveniently located right beside Fort San Pedro. Its strategic location makes it easier for tourists and locals to visit the place. Upon entering the site, our eyes were immediately captivated by the images adorning the walls of the barrel vault entrance, depicting the fort's gradual development. Among the portraits, a notable figure stood tall, Ferdinand Magellan, the Portuguese explorer who spearheaded the Spanish expedition reaching the Philippines in 1521. Fort San Pedro, the smallest and oldest port in the Philippines, boasts a storied history. Spanish and Cebuano laborers using stone mortar and wood erected this fortress under the initiative of Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, the Spanish conquistador who founded the earliest Spanish settlement in Cebu. A striking feature is the use of coral blocks in the fortress construction. No one in Claro Cain include corals. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, corals good. 
some were meticulously crushed to form blocks, while others retained their original coral structure. Contemplating this, I couldn't help but envision the extensive coral reefs sacrificed for the fort's creation. Each corner of the fortress is marked by turrets functioning as watchtowers. The site showcases 14 cannons along our path, accompanied by numerous trees and ornamental plants acting as silent guides throughout the fort. To my delight, I encountered a vibrant red kalachuchi for the first time. Today, Fort San Pedro seamlessly blends into a park providing an oasis amid the hustle and bustle of the city. It offers a serene space for solitary walks, allowing visitors to find inner peace. None of the fruits grows big because everyone is picking. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a small version of the lemon. That's why it's called Limoncito. Limoncito. Simultaneously, it serves as a museum, enlightening visitors about Cebu's history and the inception of Spanish rule in the Philippines. After exploring the third spot on our checklist, hunger had firmly taken hold. The morning had been filled with extensive walking as we visited Magellan's Cross, Santo Nino Church, and Fort San Pedro, immersing ourselves in the rich history of Cebu. Feeling the exhaustion from the day's adventures, we decided to head to SM City to satisfy our growing appetite for lunch. Given our hunger, we chose the convenient option of dining at a fast food establishment. Considering the bustling crowd at most fast food joints, we settled on Shakey's since it happened to be one of the few that still had available seating. With our decision made, we eagerly sat down to enjoy our meal at Shakey's. Bon appétit! After satisfying our hunger at Shakey's, we decided to split up for a while at the mall. Kenken's sister and her family went their way, exploring as they pleased, while Kenken and I took the opportunity to wander independently based on our interests. After a couple of hours of exploring various parts of the mall, we eventually found ourselves at a quaint stall offering native delicacies, a perfect choice for snacks, and a chance to give our feet a well-deserved rest after a day of almost constant walking. After some time, we reunited with Kenken's sister and her family at Paulito's, a Filipino restaurant, to cap off our day with a hearty dinner. Bon appetit once again!